you took an oath in front of God and my mother. I'm here, I'm queer, get used to it. Why do some gay men sound gay? I've heard people argue this idea doesn't exist or it's really just a stereotype but both research and common sense tells a different story. Many gay men have a distinctive speaking style, a real phenomenon that's been studied by linguists, sociologists, and psychologists. To me, the most interesting question is why? Why does it even exist at all? Could it be biological or learned behavior? And that got me studying. Hey, I'm Ken LaCourt. I do my best to look into sometimes awkward questions as fairly and objectively as I can. I'll take you through what I learned about the power of voice and how we communicate. Then a breakdown on exactly what the gay voice is. We'll dive into the nature versus nurture debate. And finally, we'll look into a little bit of the history and some of the dark side of the gay voice. So our voice is a powerful instrument far beyond the actual words we speak. Our vocal tones, inflections, and variations in pitch and volume convey a massive amount of information that impacts how our messages are heard. And that information can include the speaker's sexual orientation. Researchers at the University of Toronto found listeners were able to identify the sexual orientation of male speakers 62% of the time. Other studies have shown it to be higher. Now we all instinctively change our speech depending on the situation. Think about how you'd talk to a baby versus a job interview. And straight men can even drop their pitch by up to 40 hertz when talking to an attractive woman. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh, please. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> it's a sign of masculinity. We do it when we meet strangers or asserting authority, when we're the boss or, or we want to be. Even in the animal kingdom, vocal modulation is used as a tool for attracting mates. Every male, from birds to whales, alter their vocalizations to appeal to potential partners. Studies have also shown gay men were more likely to sound gay if they were talking to someone who either knew they were gay or were gay themselves. One study even showed that gay YouTubers sounded more gay after making a public coming out video. And sometimes they dial it down, sounding more straight in a work situation. Other gay men who just didn't like sounding gay could also alter that speech pattern. Okay, so what are we exactly hearing in a gay voice? Let's start with what it's not. When I grew up, it was universally called a gay lisp, but it's just not. A lisp would mean speaking your S's with a th sound, like you're thilly. But a stereotypical gay voice holds the S's longer than others, and sometimes with a little bit more of a hissing sound, sometimes with the tongue closer to the teeth and overall more noticeable. Another thing the gay voice isn't is a really a feminine way of speaking. There are some similarities and overlap, but it's distinct. It's also not universal. Couldn't find great statistics on this, but it clearly seems to be a voice that a minority of gay men use. And finally, it's not a higher pitch than most men. Instead, it's a wider fluctuation in range. Results find that gay men speak with higher pitch variation, meaning that their range from low to high is much more extreme than straight men. Not surprised we have range, honey. Vowel duration is another distinct element. Gay voice holds A's, I's, and O's longer. Okay, so there are fewer studies on this one, but a popular documentary called Do I Sound Gay also holds that the gay voice is characterized by heavily articulating certain consonants and words overall. And here's an interesting note. Elements of the gay voice seem to cross different cultures and languages. Similar speech patterns have been observed in gay Dutch and Czech men. There hasn't been a lot of research on non-American or non-European cultures, but we see it also in Puerto Rican Spanish and other dialects of Caribbean Spanish. So there might be some universal features that signal sexual orientation. So now we know what the gay voice is. The question is why? Why do some guys talk like this? Is it genetic or all about upbringing and finding your identity? It's a classic nature versus nurture debate that's really at the heart of so much we don't know about human behavior. And it may be the most fascinating question, but it's also the hardest to answer. But let's start with biology. I couldn't find any serious research aimed specifically at the gay voice in biology, but there's been a lot of it looking at homosexuality and genetics, hormones, birth order, brain functions, and more. And the more you dig into those studies, one thing becomes abundantly clear. Scientists have absolutely no idea. A study comes out finding testosterone differences between gay and straight men, only to be rebutted by a larger one finding the opposite. And then a later one finds the difference in free plasma testosterone. For decades, trying to find a gay gene has been a scientific mishmash. Part of this is because individually, human biology and behavior are massively complex. And trying to understand how they interact is really beyond our reach. We still can't cure a cold, let alone predict someone's behavior with a lab test. But there's a less charitable explanation as well. Politics poisons science. 
I first discovered this related to just this issue in the 80s when I was in college and researchers discovered gay hands. They claimed that the proportional length of men's fingers correlated to their sexual orientation. It made a big splash all over the media, but a quick look at their methods and the small sample sizes made it clear it really wasn't serious research. And unsurprisingly, no one could replicate it. But it was part of a concerted scientific effort at the time to find a gay gene to prove that homosexuality was biological. Now that wasn't just driven by scientific curiosity. It came at a time when the gay rights movement was making huge strides. And that movement wanted to counter arguments that homosexuality was a choice. If scientists could find a genetic basis, then how could being gay be wrong or a sin? They hoped it would help reduce discrimination and increase legal protections overall. But political pressure through funding or researchers who are working for a cause, it absolutely perverts science. And the more heated the debate, the worse the science gets. If you study any hot topic that people are debating in society, you need to start with the assumption that the average study is misleading. It sucks, but that's just where we are. So today, for what it's worth, the scientific consensus on being gay says that it's a combination of biology and conditioning, which is scientific talk for, we don't know. For the gay voice, though, it certainly appears to be a way to fit in with a social group. By adopting a certain way of speaking, you signal that you're part of the club. Some researchers say it starts young, when some gay boys subconsciously pick up some more feminine speech patterns from socializing more with girls and women. Historically, there's also some evidence that a lot of vocabulary unique to gay men originated in the gay ballroom culture and drag scene of the 1980s, especially among black and Latino gay men. From there, those terms and phrases spread out to the wider gay community, kind of like an in-group language. For many gay men, sounding gay may be a way of connecting with a gay identity and a culture, a way of saying, this is who I am. But for many times in history, in different geographies still, sounding gay isn't a good idea at all. Historically, the gay voice isn't just a scientific curiosity. It's got a bit of a dark side as well. Because for a long time, it was a source of mockery or a punchline and a joke. In entertainment, effeminate sounding men often were the joke. In American movies from the 1930s to the 1960s, explicit depictions of homosexuality were outright banned. But coded gay characters with effeminate mannerisms were still there, again, usually as something to ridicule. When that ban ended in the later 60s and 70s, queer characters could be more open, and the gay voice was a shorthand to indicate their identity. But they were often tragic figures in those films. It wasn't until the 80s and 90s that we started to see more positive depictions, but even then, the gay voice was often played for laughs, like Nathan Lane in The Birdcage, or the character of Jack in Will and Grace. In the past, and sometimes still now, many gay men have felt the pressure to sound straight in order to avoid discrimination. But in recent years, like black men using the N-word with friends or gay people reclaiming the word queer, gays have reclaimed the gay voice as well. To some, it's a way of taking back power. Hey, so this is my 25th YouTube video. They've been viewed about a half a million times and I've grossed a grand total of $327. But someone recently told me that when he finishes one of my video, he walks away smarter. And that's my entire goal here and that's what keeps me going. Sometimes it's a deep dive like this and other times I debunk a popular notion. I filmed this video because I saw Twitter memes all over the place saying that 400,000 kids were missing in the United States. And I just didn't believe it. When I read actual FBI stats that said 400,000 kids go missing every year, I had to get to the bottom of it. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you come back again.